But the problem with atomic absorption and atomic emission and any other atomic spectroscopy is that you need atoms. And if you want to use atoms and work with outer electrons in visible area, you need to have gas. That means you need to bring your sample in gas, which usually means destroying it. Okay, if I do not want to destroy my sample and still want to analyze it with atomic spectroscopy, is it possible? Answer is yes. But in this case, I need to look into inner electrons. So in our sodium case, 3s1 electrons in this scheme are outer electrons. Inner electrons will be 2s, 2p, and 1s electrons. The best way will be to look at deepest 1s electrons. There are two of them. The picture will be absolutely different. The energies will be very different. Here we have wavelengths around hundreds of nanometers. Now, in this case, we'll have wavelengths hundreds, if not thousand times smaller, which means hundreds or thousands times larger energies. So for sodium, we have 1s level at minus 1072 electron volts, 2s levels at minus 63 electron volts, and 3s level at around minus 5 electron volts. So energies of 3s electrons will be in single digits of electron volts, and here it will be in thousands. What happens when sodium atom absorbs photon with such a high energy. This electron from 1s orbital will simply fly away. So until we reach uh, this energy, nothing will happen. No absorption at all. When we reach it, energy is enough for this electron to jump out of sodium atom and make sodium ion. Uh, if you need to have even higher energy so electron will fly faster, uh, the probability will go down, so absorbance will go down. We'll have X-ray absorption spectrum of such shape. Uh, this is uh, important for physicist theoreticians, uh, but not very convenient for analytical uses. Why? Because of very wide absorption band. So we need to use slightly different approach, and this would be so what happens? Uh, you have photon coming from X-ray tube, and you have electron flying out. We name this electron photoelectron. Now uh, you have an empty space for one electron uh, at very deep level next to nucleus. Uh, what can happen next? We have electrons at our level, and most probably it's from 2s or 2p level. The electron will j jump down to 1s. This difference, 1072 minus 63, it will be something like uh, 1009 electron volt. Uh, will give us very sharp fluorescence peak. So when electron jumps here, photon of this energy will be emitted. 
this photon will have exactly the same energy for any sodium compounds, be it sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide, sodium metal, whatever else. Why? Because if there is some tiny shift of 1s orbital, it will be practically the same shift for 2s orbital. And in any case, these two energies are very different from valence electrons. So they will not be affected by chemical bond. Uh, this fluorescent photon uh, will be characteristic for our sodium, specifically for 1s orbital of sodium and 2s to p orbitals. Well, so we can measure this emission fluorescent photon again at very high energy and uh, analyze our sample for sodium. So what happens? Again, uh, when electron from upper level jumps into our empty space, uh, we have X-rays emitted. Uh, in case if you have empty orbital 2s or 2p, uh, we have photons jumping out with much lesser energy. Energies uh, of these photons will be mostly low. Square root of energy of emitted photon is proportional to atomic number for 1s and for 2s orbitals for all the periodic table. How can we select energy of X-ray photons? We can use the crystal as monochromator. So only one wavelength of X-ray photons will go at each direction at one angle, theta. If you have specific lambda, you have crystal with distance between atom D, so only one theta uh, will satisfy this equation. For each lambda, it will be one direction. So you can have such a spectrum, two theta angle, and number of photons coming out. The device is relatively complex, so you need to rotate your detector around here, and the, you can collect photons coming from any direction. So you have fluorescence photons coming from different elements. For example, nickel, cobalt, iron, chromium, so on. It's very helpful for identification purposes. For example, any banknote of any country has its element fingerprint, and uh, it's practically impossible to get the same fingerprint unless uh, you know all these compositions, which means uh, just by looking at X-ray fluorescence spectra, you can instantly see fake banknote. Uh, these identification problems, of course, can be for different other samples. Now, this instrument uh, was too big. So uh, we can make much smaller instrument uh, by uh, using solid state detector. So what is this? Uh, we have X-ray source. Beam is coming to our sample. And then we collect fluorescence. Windows are made of beryllium because beryllium is relatively transparent for X-ray. Now, uh, the beam is 
collected by silicon detector uh, and amplified. It can be done even without X-ray source uh, if you have a, a radioactive source of gamma rays, again of high energy. Uh, this has practical usage, say, for instruments sent to space. So how this device works? Each X-ray photon is converted uh, into electrical charge proportional to its energy. For each four electron volts, you are making one electron. So one photon for four electron volts, one electron. One photon of 400 electron volts will make us 100 electrons. If you have 1,000 electron volts, 250 electrons. So you look at event, you register the signal, photon, and count how many electrons that photon made. That's how you know what was the energy of this photon. By doing this, uh, you are getting spectrum like that. Uh, peaks are not as sharp in our previous example, but still uh, can be separated easily. You can see peaks of different elements, say silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, uh, tin, titanium, and so on, so on. You have a spectrum, and that is how you can analyze your sample. This device can be made very small. You can make handheld X-ray fluorescence instrument. They are relatively inexpensive and they have wide usage for non-destructive analysis of wide range of samples.